Hello, welcome aboard the BioTrain. In this video, we're going to talk about transport in cells. So the essential question we're working on is how do cells get what they need into the cell and get rid of what they don't need out of the cell so that they can maintain homeostasis and metabolism. So we have a cell with a cell membrane. So there's an inside of that cell and the cell's able to move the materials and molecules into the cell that it needs. It also needs to be able to move molecules and waste material out of the cell that it does not need in order to maintain the proper homeostasis inside of the cytoplasm so that metabolism can be maintained. So this is going to be a little repetitive, but there's basically two main types of transport. And this is going to be a basic introduction to passive transport, which is movement of molecules from high concentration to a low concentration. This is called with the concentration gradient. When you go from high to low, you're going with the concentration gradient. It's helpful to think of going downhill from high to low, okay? And this does not require energy, just like if you're riding a bike down a hill, whee, you can take your feet off the pedal and go down without putting any energy into pedaling. Active transport, on the other hand, is when molecules are moved from low concentration to high concentration, and this is said to be against the concentration gradient. And this does require an input of energy by the cell in the form of ATP. So let's go through this as quickly as we can, and you can always watch the video again. So let's start with passive transport, right? Passive transport, again, no energy required, uses the random movement of molecules, and this is the movement of molecules from high to low concentration, and this requires a concentration gradient in order to take place. Basically what we're talking about is diffusion. And diffusion happens in many different situations and living cells take advantage of this natural process of diffusion that takes place in the natural world. So again, to repeat, this is a movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration and this does not require energy. And when we're talking about living cells, we're talking about a membrane bound cell with a watery cytoplasm inside and water outside the cell. So osmosis, which is just a fancy word for the diffusion of water across the membrane, is another form of passive transport. So diffusion and osmosis are the two main terms when we're talking about passive transport in cells. So let's just look at this really quick example. Um, I have another video that actually shows dye diffusing in water. Um, so this beaker here, is a beaker of water. If you put a concentrated drop of dye into that beaker, you end up with a concentration gradient. You have a high concentration of red dye in that drop and low concentration in the rest of the beaker. That is not going to stay highly concentrated like that. It is going to diffuse. There's going to be a net movement of molecules from the area of high concentration to the area of lower concentration. And this will happen without any energy input, just from the random movement of molecules bumping into each other, the dye bumping into the water, the water bumping into the dye in probability, and it actually spreads from high concentration to low concentration. Eventually it reaches the stage that this beaker represents, which there's no longer a concentration gradient that exists in this beaker because the dye molecules are equally distributed. That's called equilibrium. The molecules are still moving, changing places, bumping off each other, but there's no diffusion because there's no net movement from high concentration to low concentration. Now, the second main type of transport is active transport. So the cell takes advantage of diffusion and osmosis, <coughs> excuse me, but sometimes the cell needs to move molecules against the concentration gradient. So this is the movement of molecules from low to high, which is opposite of high to low. This is the called moving against the concentration gradient. If you picture going up a hill or going up a, a stream against the current, that's a good way to picture active transport. And this does require energy. The cell needs to use ATP to make this happen. So let's look at a quick example here. So cells, they have this cell membrane, and embedded in that cell membrane are transport proteins. And the cell can actually use ATP to have this transport protein move molecules 
against the concentration gradient. So you can't use just the random movement of molecules. You have to physically pump or move the molecules across the membrane, which requires ATP. The cell can also do something called endocytosis and exocytosis. The membrane is flexible, and the cell can actually engulf um, groups of molecules or substances from its environment and then pinch off and move it into a vacuole inside the cell. This is active transport because it requires energy for the cell to do this. The reverse is possible, exocytosis, where you start with a vacuole inside of the cell, it moves to the cell membrane, fuses with the cell membrane, and then releases the substances into the external environment. Again, active because it requires ATP or energy. That was a quick introduction, and I hope that was helpful.